All right, wonderful people. Welcome back to the tutorial series of learning AWS step function in a very easy way. This is tutorial number two. Essentially, in first part, we have learned about the basic of step functions. We went over the theory, right? Now, this tutorials are gonna be hands-on lab session, which means I have prepared some wonderful labs for you, right from starting from hello world, to uh, error handling, retry, catch blocks, and com complex branching logic. I'm sure you'll enjoy this. I am not asking anything in return. I simply like to the video and sharing this would be really appreciated because creating all these labs takes a lot of effort. All right, without wasting further time, let's get started with this video. Um, so assuming you don't know step function anything, right? And uh, we are gonna cover basics, right? So in my first part, I did cover theory and I would like to give you a little bit refresher rather. So every step function will have following attributes. It will have comments, start at, and states. Comment is basically where you will describe your step function, right? What is what the step function is doing. Start at, it defines when the step function executes, what is the first thing that it needs to execute, right? That's the first thing that you need to define. Um, then essentially you define your task and we'll learn more about that in, uh, shortly. So on your management console, type the word step function and head over to this tab. So uh, I'm gonna be walking you on how to create a very simple step function and in the upcoming later parts, we'll see complex um, error handling, retry logics and stuff like that. So click on the button which says create step function. Uh, we will leave this to, we'll, we'll essentially cl click on write your own custom code, right? And here uh, you will see a scaffold, right? So now we are gonna do lab number one, right? A uh, basic hello world to the step function. So this is the first lab. So as you can see, I'll try to zoom in as much as possible. So this is the comment section, which means I'm providing some comment about my state machine. I'm saying what it's, what is it, what it has to do, right? So start at, so I'm saying that I have one state called uh, lambda one. So I can just say state one or whatever you wanna call. Uh, you can give the name uh, what you feel like. Okay, so now we define the state. So every step function has to have a states block, which is a dictionary, right? So in dictionary, you define the state. So now I have a state call, um, and I'll sh try my best to also visually show you. So remember, it is like a visual diagram, right? When you say, hey, start at this point, then do this, check certain condition, check certain condition, then go here, if not, then go there. So you're defining essentially state machines, right? So now I'm saying type as pass, so result, which means the when the state is gonna be executed, what do I want it to return? I'm returning a dummy data, but I'm also gonna add a lambda shortly. End as true, which means this is a very a simple state, uh, state machine. All it has to do is execute and it's gonna return the message dummy world. So now I copy paste here and I come to this console and I dump it here. So as you can see, I see in the visual representation, I see a state one, right? And assuming this is a lambda, right? This block is a lambda, assuming, as I said, it's gonna do some computation and it's gonna return you something. And, in the, and, and then I'm gonna show you how to attach lambda shortly. So now you give it a name of a sta state machine. I'm gonna provide this as lab one. And then I'll click on create state machine. Now you will see something like this. Now you can execute the machine by clicking on the button here and then you can pass in the input. So I can say, I can provide I'm passing on a custom input and then I execute the state machine and sure enough, the green symbol means that the state was executed successfully. Now here you can see the input was this, the output of the state was my dummy data. So essentially it did some computation and it is returning your result. So this is, this is how you can uh, look at a state machine, right? On the bottom section, you will have something called event history. It tells you how much time a particular state machine took, right? 110 millisecond, 110 millisecond, 110 millisecond. It gives you a timestamp as well, right? So this is a very basic tutorial, right? So if you go back to the state machine, if you click here, here you will see on a high level, uh, the name, I believe this is a random GUID. You have a status, whether it was successful or failed. Then you have started and end time, what time it started and what time it ended, right? Now, if you wanna edit, you can click on edit button and you can edit the state machine here. Now, I have a very simple Lambda, as you can see, hello world. Now, how do I attach a Lambda to this, right? Actual Lambda. So, we'll go to lab number two. So now, as you can see here, this is my state. So I'll say state one. 
and then I'll define my state. So now I use the word type as task. When you use the word task, uh, it knows that it's a Lambda. Now in the resource function, I need to provide the ARN, which is gonna be this Lambda ARN, which I'll copy paste here shortly. Over here. And then I'm saying end as true. That means I don't have any other states than that. So now I wanna edit my state, state machine. So I come here and I dump this one. And as you can see, I can click on the save button right here. Save anyways. Once it is saved, I can head over back, come to lab number one, start execution, start this. And uh, once the execution is complete, uh, as you can see, this state machine has failed here. So I just wanted to show you, right? Anytime a state machine fails, it will show you that in a red uh, red color. So now, as you can see, you can monitor every single um, item here, right? You can monitor whether the step, uh, the state was failed or whether it passed, right? So you can monitor everything here. Let's take a look. Uh, and if you want, you can also uh, look at the logs in the CloudWatch as well. But what I'm gonna do is I purposely failed it. Um, so I'm gonna go to general. I, I just made it three seconds, right? So I'm gonna increase this, right? I'm gonna make this to two minutes so that it gets some time. I purposely failed because I wanted to show you guys, right? So the red color indicates that the state, the, the machine, the state, the state was failed, right? So now I'm going back to the state machine. Now if I go here, you should see something called failed, right? So you could see all these stuff, right? So now let's try again. Uh, let's take a look at the error also. So now it's gonna come here and I can come to the... Okay, so here is the exception. So seems like the exception is uh, because uh, it... So as you can see, read it clearly, right? Uh, it does not have the required permission access denied, right? So we need to add a IAM permission to this. Uh, the way you do that is uh, very, very easy, right? So you come to the state machine and of course each uh, state machine will have an IAM role. Um, we can do a fine grain access. For example, if you just want to give invocation, you can give invocation permission. But for all these demos man, moving forward, I'll try to, uh, hopefully if it opens up, I'll try to use administrator. I usually for all my demos, I don't do fine grain access, right? So I'll uh, attach a policy here. Uh, let me see if I can find. So here administrative access. I'll just attach it for now because I wanna, you know, avoid, because I'm gonna add SQS and all in other videos. So I'm just gonna avoid that for, for, for this video. So now I have added that permission and now we will try once again to execute that state. So start execution, giving it a JSON. And now, as you can see, this has a green symbol. The input was this, right? The output of the, uh, is the output of the Lambda, right? Status 200 and uh, we have a JSON body. So now if you go here to the monitor section and if you ho get over to the logs, we will also do serverless, but let's understand basics uh, once you understand syntax, basic, branching, looping, all that, then we can do all these complicated stuff, right? Hopefully you'll get an idea. You can come here and go to logs and, and see. I, I, I technically do not have a print statement, so you're not gonna see any logs, but if you have any print statements or log statements, you will see all those in the CloudWatch, right? So I have a CloudWatch here, right? You can see all of that. So that's gonna be my lab number one. I would conclude it right here. I have lab three, lab four, where we do complex error handling and retry logic, right? So I hope you are very much excited for upcoming labs. And if you are, please let me know that in the comment section below. This is gonna be uh, essentially tutorial number two. Tutorial number three, we are gonna explore retry scenarios in our st uh, step functions, okay? Thank you so much for wa watching. In return, a simple like would be really appreciated. Thank you so much.